I got one more. See, now this is like a Sophie's Choice of Horror. You put me in this position. Chris, why do you love Halloween? Oh my God, first of all, Halloween is the best holiday of the year. It involves no relatives. It is the stress-free holiday. I generally get my decorations out in September. You know, Party City's always got the, the costumes out. They're out in August. There's no competition. Halloween is the best holiday because it's, it's such low stress. In addition, it is an excuse to revisit every horror film that you love. And it's also when the studios say, hey, have we got some horror films? We should release them in October. But now it's like, I feel like that calendar has been pushed into September. For me, it's more than a month long celebration. So I love Halloween. Um, yeah, I don't dress up as much as I used to. I used to dress up, but no, I, I, the, the holiday is, is great because it's sort of top of mind for everybody of like, oh yeah, that's, I'm gonna go see the new whatever horror film. But yeah, absolutely my favorite personal holiday. What was your costume of choice? Oh man, um, let's see. I once dressed as Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi in high school. That was in my senior year. In my junior year, I dressed as Alex from Clockwork Orange. I literally had the white jock strap on the outside, the jack boots, the bowler hat, the, the single eyelash, an eyeball on my on, on the you know my shirt collar. My, my, the, anyways, or on the on the uh, anyways, it was a very accurate costume for Clockwork or a Clockwork Orange, and no one knew who I was. Not one single person in my high school knew who I was. And there were a couple teachers that looked at me and said, how do you even know that movie? So, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, and more recently I dressed as like Logan from Logan's Run. But I was Logan after he went to the new you. I just think that like Halloween is not just an opportunity to, you know, uh, enjoy parties. It's stress-free because it doesn't involve family or travel. Family and travel can be stressful during certain holidays. And, you know, it's it's just nonstop parties. And then it's also enjoying horror movies and getting to dress up like an adult without judgment. And and so what's not to love about Halloween? You Even theme parks make it a month long celebration. Everything from Universal Horror Nights, uh, Not Scary Farm, Disneyland even does their, their own Halloween uh, events. So I love Halloween. You're not ever gonna convince me. And plus, I, I, you know, it, it's, I'll, I'll always discover new horror films I haven't seen during Halloween. What are your top five go-to horror films? Oh, wow. Well, first off, Night of the Living Dead, the original 1968 George Romero is absolutely one of my favorites. Um, frightened me beyond belief. It's that one, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, horrific. I saw that when I was a teenager and I, it was the last time I ever remember sleeping with the light on because I was so terrified. Uh, the original Halloween, the very first Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis uh, blew my mind. I would say Alien, 1979, Ridley Scott, original Alien is a horror film that, um, I mean, yes, people sort of put that in the science fiction category, but it, uh, that's a horror film that holds up to today. And uh, I got, I got one more choice. I got one more. See, now this is like a Sophie's Choice of Horror. You've put me in this position. Uh, I, I'm gonna say Poultry Geist because I love Lloyd Kaufman. It's weird, it's more of a horror comedy and uh, it, it's it's about fast food. And then um, honorable mention to Evil Dead 2 and Bruce Campbell in that movie.
See, I, I got six out of it. Which Halloween movies do you watch every year? Night of the Living Dead, I'll watch at least once a year. I used to own, so Night of the Living Dead, I would watch not just once a year. I used to, when I was a kid, I had a Super 8 sound projector. I had a full print of Night of the Living Dead, okay? And it was the way I find, found out, like, because I'd only ever seen Night of the Living Dead on some chiller theater or late night, you know, horror host. So I'd seen it then. I didn't realize the movie was cut. When I finally got the Super 8 version, all the kids in, in the neighborhood where I grew up in Royal Oak, Michigan, we'd put a sheet on the side of the garage and we'd get popcorn and I would project Night of the Living Dead, you know, full unedited. There's like full frontal nudity in that movie. There's gory stuff with guts and intestines. I mean, it's a graphic movie that George Romero really made for the drive-in, but uh, at the time when I was a kid, didn't realize probably probably an R-rated movie and only got to see it because I had a Super 8 projector and with money I saved for my paper route, got the complete feature. But yeah, that's one that um, I like to watch every year is, is Night of the Living Dead. It's just, it's just, it's so inspiring because it's such a simple story. It's low budget and most of the action, I mean, everybody says the zombies are the villains in that movie. I think the zombies are a catalyst for all the tensions between the people that are in the boarded up house. That's where the real conflict lies. And that's, I think, the brilliance of George Romero was to focus on that aspect. So that's, that's a Halloween movie I watch every year. Of course, you know, Halloween without watching Halloween is just, it just doesn't feel like Halloween. The uh, John Carpenter original with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is just, I mean, just the sound of that score, right? You just hear that score and it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, those are, those, are, those are ones that I revisit. Can you recommend any independent films that are Halloween based? Indie horror films? Yeah, the very first Evil Dead, which I think when you watch that film, what I love about watching that movie is just what little resources Sam Raimi had to make the first Evil Dead film. You know, he, he used like stop motion animation, a lot of other techniques. One of my favorite techniques that he used, and he used this not just for the first Evil Dead, but the second one as well. He called it a shaky cam. And it's sort of a, it, it, it's what he, what he did was he would take a camera, he would mount it on a two by four and run with it or ride a bicycle. And it's sort of a, the shaky cam is a low budget version of a steady cam. He literally just took a camera, put it in the center of the board, right? So it's weighted, it's in the center. You have like a seesaw, the center of the seesaw is the camera. And when you run with it, it gives it a smooth look. So Sam Raimi used that for um, at least the early Evil Dead films. I'm not sure if he used it in Evil Dead 3, but they would call it the shaky cam. And I, and I just love that, that it's like, well, we've got no money. We can't afford to rent a steady cam, you know, but we're gonna just create one. And they used a two by four. As a kid, what was your favorite Halloween candy that you would always go back to that house every year? Oh, well, it's gonna be a tie for me. It's malted milk balls, because I love the taste of malted milk, and Raisinets. Raisinets, because, you know, it's kind of the healthy candy. I, you know, it's got chocolates. But then recently I just found out there's tons of sugar in raisins. And I was very disappointed to learn this. But I'm still, I'm a Raisinets popcorn and soda guy at the movies because of that. 